I see a lot of new YouTubers ending their videos in a way that's costing them views. And I don't mean just having people watch another video. I'm talking about just blowing it, making a huge mistake. So I'm going to tell you how to end your videos. And we're starting right now. This video is brought to you by Video Leap. Video Leap is a free mobile video editor that's super intuitive and easy to learn. With Video Leap, you can do anything from cutting and connecting clips to adding filters and keyframes and even editing in multiple layers, allowing you to do your video editing on the go. You can use Video Leap free, but with the pro subscription, you get access to even more pro functionality and access to extra filters, animations, text effects, and more. Personally, I use Video Leap on the go to quickly put together YouTube and Instagram stories because I love how easy and fun it is to use. You can even make full length YouTube videos with this. To try Video Leap for yourself, click the link below this video. When you're new to YouTube, you're watching all these videos on YouTube and you see all these content creators doing all of these things. And that doesn't necessarily mean that it's right for you. So I'm going to tell you how to end your videos in a way that's not damaging your audience retention. And I'm going to tell you how you can use your video endings to get more views on your channel. The very first thing that I see tons of new YouTubers doing is you are ending your videos before the video is actually complete. I know that doesn't make sense. So hear me out. When people are watching your YouTube videos, they're there for the content that you're giving them. They clicked on the thumbnail and title to get a specific thing from you. As soon as it's clear to the viewer that they have gotten what it is that they came to that video for, guess what? They're out of there. They're looking for something else to watch and it might not be your video. Here's how that happens. Let's say you are watching a video and then towards the end of the video somewhere, let's say a minute before the video is actually complete, you say something along the lines of, and that's how you, boom, that's it. They're gone. You just told them that, hey, that's how you do X, Y, Z. This video is complete. The information that you just came here for, guess what? It's over. And the same thing goes for and that's why, boom, the story's over. As soon as those words come out of your mouth, you're indicating to the viewer that, hey, the story that I've been telling you all this time, it's over. The same thing applies to recipe videos. Like if you're one of those channels to where you are cooking something and while you're cooking something, you have the whole recipe that you put together and then you taste it. Look in your audience retention reports if you're one of those channels and make sure that even though you enjoyed on the taste test at the end, even though that you think the taste test is important, look in your analytics to make sure that your audience thinks it's important too. Sometimes they do. Other times they bail as soon as the recipe is over. So you have to make sure that you understand what it is that people are coming to you for. In a lot of cases, they're coming there for the recipe and the creator, but in a lot of cases, they're also just coming there for the recipe. So they don't care about your opinion and all the different stuff that you're going to say about all the flavors and stuff that you have exploding in your mouth, but they might. So because of that, you want to make sure that you're using data for this one, but you want to look and make sure that they are coming there for that taste test as well as the recipe itself. And the same thing applies to gaming videos. Like if you're showing people how to do something, not just a let's play, but if you're showing people how to do something, then as soon as that thing that you're showing them how to do is complete, you should end your video. Of course, because every channel is unique and the audience that responds to that channel is unique and all that, make sure that you double check this with your stats. But from what I've seen, regardless of the content type, as soon as the viewer gets what it is that they've gotten out of the video, they bounce. And the downside of doing those things isn't just that people leave your video. I mean, that sucks too, but part of them leaving your video means that it's actually hurting your audience retention. It's hurting the complete rate on that video. It's hurting your ability to get people to click on your end screen elements or for you to remind them to subscribe at the end of the video or for you to get them to click on a card or whatever it happens to be for you. So to wrap that one up so we can move on to the next one, just in a nutshell, you don't want to verbally end your videos. You don't want to let people know, hey, this video is pretty much complete. Now we're just going to fill in a bunch of extra stuff. Respect your viewers and their time and give them a good experience and they'll keep coming back. The next thing people like to do at the end of YouTube videos is they like to ask their viewers to do a whole bunch of stuff. Subscribe, leave a comment, give this video a thumbs up, share it with somebody you know, donate something, add this to a playlist so you can watch it later. You get the idea, but it's important to make sure that when you are doing something like that at the end of your videos, instead of having this big length of time that you spend asking people to do all of this stuff, focus them on something. Each video that you put out should have a purpose of some kind, but videos serve multiple purposes as well because people respond to videos in a different way. You know, or at least you will over time, the videos that drive more subscribers when you make that type of content. So in that situation, you might want to use those videos to encourage people to subscribe at the end instead of a bunch of other stuff. If you're putting a series together, however, to where it's important for you to make sure that you are sending people from one video to another video to another video, in that situation, you might want to not put any of that stuff at all because you want people to just click on that next video, which brings me to the next thing. If you watch my 
my videos on a regular basis, one of the things that you'll notice is that I typically tell people to click into a video or a playlist at the end of the video. This is really good for increasing the views to your channel. And my friend Brian G. Johnson actually just made a whole video about this. I'll actually link to it in the description, but this is really good for getting extra views without having to really do much. But the importance of having in-screen elements pop up on your screen, which if you're not familiar with what in-screen elements are, it's just the videos that pop up on the screen at the end of a video. The importance of having those is one, it helps viewers click and watch another video, but two, when you are adding the calls to action to subscribe, when you are inviting people to like your video and things like that, if those are on the screen while that's happening, then you're doing two things. You're inviting people to do the thing that you want them to do, which is like or subscribe or comment or visit your website or whatever it happens to be, but you are also giving them the option to watch another one of your videos right there on the screen. And here's what I recommend when you're doing that. When your videos are moving along and people are watching your content and they're like into it, they're watching it, they're watching it, drop your in screen on them before you ask people to subscribe, before you do anything to let people know that the video is complete or coming to an end. I recommend also that some of the stuff that you're doing at the end of your video is recommending people to watch another video or go into a playlist. But at the very least, you wanna have those things on your screen. And when you do have those on your screen, I recommend that you put one for best for viewer. And the next one is the video or playlist that would make the most sense for the viewer to watch next. And you pick that one. But the reason for the two is because if you have the video that you're trying to drive people into and those people have already seen that video or some of the people have seen that video, YouTube is going to show the one that they think is the best for that viewer. And YouTube knows what videos people have watched on your channel. So that video is changing for all the different people that are watching your channel, but the best for viewer spot, YouTube is going to show them what would make the most sense for them to watch on your channel. So you want to do it in a strategic way as well to where whatever it is that you happen to be linking to there is relevant to the viewer, but then you also have the one from YouTube. So you're kind of hitting two birds with one stone there in terms of trying really hard to make sure that you are encouraging people to watch something else on your channel. But again, even when it comes to asking people to subscribe or comment or like, or even if you want to go through that whole spiel of, hey, do this, do that, do the other thing, still have videos on your screen while you're going through that so that while people are thinking, oh, okay, I, I've heard this a thousand times or I'm already subscribed or I've already liked or commented, then they have an option. Another one of your videos that they can click, it's right there in their face, right there on the screen, even if they're on a mobile device watching horizontally. Now, to learn how to start your videos, click on this video right here. And this one right here is the one that YouTube thinks that you should watch that I mentioned earlier. So take your pick. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.